welcome back to another episode of Yodang. Today we're talking about making decisions and um, life choices. And making decisions is possibly one of the hardest things in life when you're faced with a thorny choice, you know, you're, you're facing a fork in the road. Um, and it can be a place of great anxiety and, and paralyzing fear. And at that point, if it's a very important decision, it's quite likely that your mind will be talking at you quite a lot. And it'll be trying to analyze all the possible scenarios of things that might happen if you make a certain decision, if you make another decision. And these scenarios can be more or less frightening. They can be good or they can be frightening. And you will probably try and make a decision based on those scenarios that you're playing in your head. Oh, I'd like this to happen. Oh, I don't want this to happen. Or I need to be careful if I do this, this might happen. Um, and it, it can get to a point where you get stuck. Uh, if it's a very important decision, um, it, it can be very hard to act. It can be very hard. And uh, I wrote a blog, I wrote a blog entry, a piece for the blog, uh, you're done, about this topic. And in that um, piece, I actually quote a talk by Alan Watts on this topic. And uh, he says, that when you, when you think about it, I mean, your mind, when you're trying to make a decision, it tries to take into account all the possible factors that come into play, all the possible variables. And we like to think that we're in control in that we can make a rational decision based on that sort of analysis. But what he says um, is that really when you think about it, the number of variables and factors that could affect your decision are infinite. Because the universe is so complex that really uh, the number of ways in which a thing could turn out to be um, are infinite. Um, and therefore, he, he keeps going, when you think of the number of times that actually you made, a, you made a decision and it turned out to be okay, it's almost like a miracle. Because... Because for as much as we'd like to think that we are actually very good and very rational, uh, you realize that there's a greater force at play. Um, and that really, when your life turns out to be all right, or at least uh, so it seems from your perspective, um, it's really not because of your own doing. Not only anyway. And in any case, this idea of separation between what I do and the things that happen to me is quite an illusion. Born out of the fact that I have this uh, idea of separation of being a separate entity from the universe. So that I think that there is me, there is this person and there is the universe. And this illusion of duality brings about the illusion of things that happen to me that I may consider uh, good things or bad things and things that I do, okay? But really, when you realize that there is no person and that you're at one with the universe, this fiction of things that happen to me and things that I do, of passivity and, and activity, um, it turns out to be uh, fake. Okay, so this brings us closer to the truth about making decisions because it is as much in my control as it is outside of my control, okay? The factors that I think are external and the factors that I think are internal actually overlap. Now, 
Well, you're going to say, well, how does that help me? First of all, uh, we need to be clear about the fact that we we have, you know, we have a mind and we want to use it. Okay, the mind is not necessarily a harmful tool or a useless tool by any means, if we know how to use it. So do your thinking, do your analysis, consider the things that you think are important and deserve your consideration. But after that, there comes to a point when just before you make your decision, whether it's a few days if you've got that much time or a, a few minutes, if you don't have the luxury of having a few days, at that point, you want to put your mind to one side and you want to become very present and you want to become very still and very mindful, okay? I won't say that you need to suppress your thoughts. We, we don't want to suppress anything here, okay? Everything must be accepted. Um, but you want to observe your thoughts. If you can't quiet in your mind, if your mind keeps talking at you, you want to observe it, but be mindful. So observe it without being carried away or necessarily believing what your mind is telling you. And at that point, if you're very still, if you're very present, a greater intelligence comes into play, a greater force comes into play. And that force, in a way, guides you, okay? That's a... It's a sort of a linguistic paradox because I'm, you know, speaking of things that are not very easy to 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 dis to be discussed um, using using our language system. But that greater force will guide you, and hopefully, uh, you will make what we may call a sound decision. Having said that. We really need to say, uh, before we end this talk, that even that notion of the right decision and the wrong decision uh, is a very limited notion. It's a very, it's a very flawed notion. And it's reflective of, of a very um, narrow approach, narrow vision of the world and the universe. Okay, um, Because if I look back on my past experiences and the things that conventionally would be considered mistakes, I actually realized that my mistakes uh, eventually, further down the line, led to a greater good. And it's quite cliche when we say that you are the person, the person that you are today is the outcome of your past experiences, good and bad. Uh, but it's a cliche because it's true. You are. And so when you look at it from this perspective, you realize that uh, there is no such thing as mistakes in the universe, okay? So everything that happens, seemingly good or bad, actually serves a greater good. What does it mean? This means that when you make a decision, you do not need to be so fearful about the outcome. You do not need to be so attached to what the outcome is going to be. If you can have that knowledge within you that no matter what happens, it will be all right. And that whatever happens to you or whatever happens to me at this very moment, regardless of how bad it might be, it might seem to be, it is actually exactly what we need right now in order to grow as human beings. And so with that realization, you can act without fear, you can act without worry, and you can be liberated, okay? And when you act without being attached to the fruits of your labor, everything flows more beautifully, everything flows more easily, and just everything works out much better. So I hope that helps you. I've, I'm just about to finish my tea, so that means I need to stop talking. No, it's not true. Um, consider subscribing if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time.